Hello and welcome back to my Gloomhaven speedruns. Uh, this time it is easy instead of brutal, so if you haven't seen that brutal video, go ahead and check that one out. That one's lots of fun. Uh, but this one is easy in 80 minutes. Um, it's going to be very, 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 very different from my brutal run. Uh, it uses completely different characters, um, and the run is very different overall. So, uh, very minor spoilers, there are 16 missions required to get the End of Gloom achievement, and that's all I'll go through. I use Prosperity 1 items, but I don't ever raise the Prosperity, uh, and I only use 3 classes, and they are all starting classes. I do have uh, the Jaws of the Lion DLC stuff enabled. Unfortunately, that loses a couple, time, a couple seconds to uh, loading times, uh, but the Hatchet is very fast for this run. Uh, so I did get some very good luck in the beginning. Uh, both of my characters got a little bit of extra gold with their road event on the way to level 1. Other than that, I just bought Boots of Striding for extra movement and Power Potions for extra damage. So coming into level 1, there is one very, very, very important mechanic uh, for the Spellweaver that I abuse heavily in this game. Um, and that has to deal with Crackling Air. So Crackling Air is a buff that on your next 4 attacks, uh, the spell weaver gets one or two bonus damage if you consume air when you set the set the buff. Now, as long as the spell weaver has one charge of crackling air remaining, if she uses an AOE attack, that AOE attack will get that one charge on every one of the targets. So you can see right here, I am setting up my crackling air, and I have three targets that I'm going to be hitting with fire orbs which will leave me with one charge remaining, but then when I go into the final room, I will still be able to hit four targets and use that charge four more times, even though it should only work once. So Spellweaver gets some good damage in here, almost clears out the first room. Uh, it's kind of up in the air what I do here, whether I use the plus one bonus damage from Fancy Hat or whether I use the Hatchet, just based off how much damage that Elite has taken, but this... Uh, my first two turns have gone perfectly. I have this room cleared, and my hatchet has his favorite in his hand. Uh, so now it is time to get Disorienting Barrage back. Have the hatchet go faster. He's going to come into the second room, uh, do some damage with the bottom of Disorienting Barrage. Uh, I activated Extra Lift on turn one, so all of my hatchet's moves are huge, and he can fly across scenarios. And that makes Disorienting Barrage one of the absolute best movement tools in the entire game. Uh, adding plus two movement when you're already moving three different times. Uh, it's completely crazy. It lets you fly across entire scenarios. It's not really necessary uh, in in this first scenario, but it does set wind on turn one, which is something that my Spellweaver needs for Crackling Air. That's why I paired these two characters together, because you can see right here, the Spellweaver deletes rooms when she has access to a Crackling Air buff. And that is level 1. Uh, right here, I probably should have just pushed that guy into the trap. Trap steal 2 damage on easy. Um, but it worked out in the end. I also could be picking up these gold piles. I'm not 100% sure exactly uh, what my money routing is like on easy. I haven't experimented with it a ton. Um, I've only done a few runs with these characters. Probably about 10 runs with the Spellweaver and the Hatchet as my mains. Um, so I have it sped up again. We're going into level 2 now. Uh, level 2, if you know this level, um, it has a lot of RNG based off of what the bandit commander does. He can either summon or open doors. Uh, those are six of his eight options. And both of those add extra enemies and can be really bad for you. Fortunately, uh, I have a strategy where I can always kill him before he will open a door. Um, unless I get absolutely terrible RNG of minus 2, minus 2. I'm also playing with crits turned off, so if I draw a crit or a miss, it's just a plus two or a minus two. So turn one on this second scenario here, my hatchet was able to get two kills with two attacks for four. It doesn't really matter if he doesn't get the kills, uh, because I need to spend one more turn setting up before I go and face the boss. My hatchet needs to be able to fly across the room, so he needs his extra lift, and he wants his hatchet out so that he can deal three extra damage. Spellweaver is just going to get some gold, Hatchet gets set up, and we are ready to go into the boss room. I'm pretty sure everything except for minus two, minus two, will kill this boss here. And then uh, 
69 is the fastest I can go on the Spellweaver, but that's actually faster than all of his cards that will open the door. Uh, so it is possible that he could summon an elite Living Bones here. Uh, that doesn't happen in this case, and even if it does, since the Spellweaver is using uh, Fire Orbs, she would be able to hit it, and she would be very likely to kill. She'd be attacking for 6, and it has 5 health. So anything but a minus 2 would kill. But we have a 3 health and a 5 health, so I do pop my Power Potion so that a minus 1 will kill, and it wasn't needed. That is Barrel Layer done. We are seven minutes in, and we have completed two levels. Uh, easy is very, very, very fast-paced. Compared to Brutal, um, it's, it's really interesting because the monsters just disappear, but you have access to almost no tools. Uh, since I don't increase the prosperity, and since any gold pile I pick up is only worth two gold, it's, it's almost just a complete waste of time to pick up any gold. And there's not really very much that's super good in the shop anyway. So some of the absolute hardest scenarios and the easy speed run are some of the easiest ones on Brutal. Coming into Crypt of the Dam, this level introduces us to summoners. Um, the cultists can summon skeletons, which can be really annoying. That's definitely the biggest, uh, the biggest RNG factor. And this level, I do believe I get some bad RNG, and it's some of the worst RNG I get in the whole run, which is pretty good because it's, it's not that bad. So once again, we're setting up uh, extra lift and the hatchet on the hatchet. And then my Spellweaver is going to be summoning, since there are a lot of enemies in this first room. Gets the wind set up. These two characters have pretty good synergy in that uh, the hatchet sets a lot of wind that he does not use. And the Spellweaver loves having wind and just any element for Mana Bolt. But then they also have really, really poor synergy when it comes to speeds. Every single one of the Hatchet's cards is faster than the Spellweaver's Fire Orbs. Meaning if you are trying to use Fire Orbs and Ride the Wind to go super far and do a lot of damage, you cannot go faster than the Hatchet, which does get in the way many times during this run. But Hatchet's going for a Fancy Hat Disorienting Barrage combo here to hit three targets for three. Get the Hatchet on that elite and get the one shot which is very nice would also be really nice if that archer would go down right there but my summon will take care of it so it's very important to count the charges on crackling air on the spell weaver so i can hit three targets right here and they all die thank goodness uh, but unfortunately this cultist is summoning so if he had not summoned I would have had my Spellweaver go into the, the final room in the top left there, and I would have had her use Fire Orbs to hit all three targets, and she still would have been able to have three charges of Crackling Air left, even though there's only one. Uh, but since that guy summoned on this turn, and he's summoning again here, I need to just go ahead and kill him. Uh, so I will not have my Crackling Air up, and these enemies in the final room are rather difficult. Uh, they have a lot of health, and two of them have shield. So I really need that Crackling Air, so I'm going to have to spend several turns kind of just wasting time uh, getting Crackling Air back. Don't need the summon anymore, it was a little bit useful. Uh, so now if you know your Spellweaver mechanics, it's time for me to use Reviving Aether and get my Lost Cards back. Hatchet is going to go and go into the room in the top right and solo the enemy in there. Uh, the only thing I have to remember to think about is that I need to set wind for my spellweaver for when she sets up her crackling air. So that will be my hatchet's priority on this following turn is to go fast and to set up the wind. Uh, but he is very good at killing single targets with the hatchet. Gets the one shot. So now I just need crackling air and I need to go slow and get in position and stopping power is it's very it's not very good i don't use the card for much of anything other than the fact that it is a jump that sets wind so it gets a couple uses in the run because of that spellweaver is just going to get a little bit closer and ready to go into the final room now this is this room i i definitely remember i just finished this run <laughs> uh this this is one of my worst rng pieces right here Ideally, all of these enemies would die. I just need zeros or better for them to die. 
uh, or minus ones are better for them to die. But I get the minus two right here, and the wind demon survives with one. So not the end of the world, it's just going to take an extra turn, probably loses about 30 seconds. As long as he dies on this second turn. I don't remember, but I think he does. I have to waste time short resting. My hatchet will get an extra gold pile, which is nice. And I probably could have grabbed that one for the Spellweaver. But in the end, in this run, I end up with way more gold than I need. And Crypt of the Damned is done. On to Ruinous Crypt. Um, I do... Obviously, I pick battle goals for my characters for every round, and I try to get ones that I will get automatically with the strategies that I'm using. I do not ever focus on getting them. Uh, I can almost never even tell you what they are while I'm doing the run. I'm much more focused on just trying to remember exactly what my strategies are and to plan my card picks for the next turn. Uh, once again here, I got gold from a road event, which is really good, but it also messes me up. Um, because I didn't realize that because I've had two road events that went just like that, I have actually gotten enough negative reputation that all my items are going to cost more in the shop, uh, which really messes me up when I create my third character that I use later in the run. But for right now, uh, this scenario, both my characters start disarmed. Neither of these carriers, characters get ignore negative scenario effects, so there's nothing I can do about that. Uh, so I will just have to live with it. Luckily, I really like setting up on turn one anyway, so I can just get in position, get my extra lift up, get my favorite up, get my summon out, and my crackling air. So I have four really good actions that I can take, even though I'm disarmed. Uh, it's kind of counterintuitive, but actually the best RNG here is for these cultists to summon on this turn, um, because the Spellweaver is never going to hit four targets, so she's not going to use all of her charges of crackling air. And so if she hits three, the cultists bring themselves down low enough that they die to a fancy hat disorienting barrage combo. With that in mind here, I should have adjusted to the RNG that I get. Because uh, Spellweaver is able to kill these guys. Goodbye. And I really should have hatcheted this cultist right here. Uh, my... My summon is in this room, so it will be able to take care of this night demon on the following turn. Uh, but I, I just didn't notice that this cultist was summoning fast enough. Uh, if I had seen that he was summoning, I would have hatcheted him. But now he's bringing an extra skeleton into the field, and that's going to cause me to lose an entire turn. Because 5 damage is just too much for me to deal. Uh, so ideally, Hatchet would go into the left room and clear it in a single turn, and Spellweaver would go into the right room and clear it in a single turn, and this would be the last turn. But that extra skeleton gets in my way. Also, the damage on this Night Demon, he's being a jerk. So double throw does some good damage here. Luckily, I actually don't kill the skeleton, which means I can push him into the trap. You have very few jumps on the hatchet. Uh, the favorite card is a jump, but you're mostly using that for the fact that it's the favorite. And then he has stopping power, which is his other jump. Um, but that's a loss, and uh, you will see what my plan is for this next room. Now, the Spellweaver wouldn't have been able to clear this room in one shot anyway, because that guy ended up surviving because of the minus. But that's pretty good RNG, because it gives the Spellweaver the access to this chest in the bottom right-hand corner, which is 15 gold. So ideally, I would kill this guy one turn faster, but not killing him just means that I get extra gold on the Spellweaver, which I don't need because I got such good road events. But need disorienting barrage back here. The bottom of it is super, super useful. On easy, uh, being able to do teal to deal three true damage to all adjacent targets is really, really solid. It's one of my favorite cards for playing the hatchet in this speed run. Uh, both the bottom and the top are really good. So Spellweaver is able to get this chest. You can see I'm already losing time to my best split, but it's not the end of the world. Get close, make sure these guys both suffer two damage, and there go the flame demons. And now power pitch with the hatchet will one-shot this guy. And Ruinous Script is done onto Plane of Elemental Power. Uh, these scenarios are connected, so even though my Hatchet, I believe he has enough experience to level up right now, uh, I'm not going to. My Spellweaver probably has enough experience to level up as well, but she is not going to get to level up this run. Uh, 
there's one card that the hatchet gets uh his level three card that i end up grabbing for this run is very useful and it actually in multiple scenarios will replace uh using the favorite any hatchet players out there will will really they will suffer through <laughs> through hearing that there are multiple scenarios where i do not use the favorite uh sometimes i use it only for the bottom all right plane of elemental power so this is a scenario where i do not want to start with the favorite uh it's much better for me to just kill these flame demons luckily the card double throw also sets wind for my uh spellweaver's crackling air so i get the extra damage from fancy hat bottom and my power potion that way minus ones i will still kill minus twos i wouldn't but i get lucky here uh, if one of those enemies did survive, I would just keep my summon alive, and the summon deals one damage to a flame demon if he gets a uh, plus zero or better. So now Hatchet gets to set up on turn two to get ready for the rest of the scenario with his extra move and his extra damage. And Spellweaver is going to fly into this second room. The easy run is very straightforward. It's mostly just uh, see enemies, kill enemies. And then the hardest part is just uh, counting your crackling air charges and abusing them. And then you hit a bunch of enemies and hope that you draw plus zeros to kill them. And if you don't, <laughs> then you might just have to reset. Maybe not reset, but lose a bunch of time. So right hand. Right here, I could go fast with the Spell Weaver and just kill this Sun Demon, but I would much rather save my Crackling Air uh, for the final room. So I'm actually just going to he go ahead and Reviving Ether a little bit early right here, even though it loses a couple turns of stamina. I'm not worried about exhausting before I finish this, because I only need to kill five more enemies. And then here, uh, Hatchet's just going to go ahead and start moving towards the next room. Uh, hazardous terrain and traps deal so little damage on easy that it's really not something to worry about. And then power pitch is a little bit of overkill here, but it's the card I had and it guarantees kills without having to use the favorite or anything. So right here I would love to get, I would love for my hatchet to go in the room after my spell weaver, but unfortunately their speeds just don't line up. He cannot go slower than 69, so I just go ahead and have him long rest. Uh, it'll mean I get his boots back for when I go for a disorienting barrage. I had something lined up incorrectly, and so my spellweaver wasn't able to get to that flame demon in the back. Ideally, she would be hitting the two flame demons and the sun demon. Uh, and super ideally, she would kill the sun demon by getting a plus one instead of a minus one. Uh, so this this is one of the places in the run where I do get some bad RNG, but it was it was due somewhere. And Spellweaver is going to take a lot of punishment here. But the Hatchet has more than enough stamina to clean up these remaining enemies. He's going to get his boots back. Spellweaver will get to do a little bit more damage. I don't know these characters very well. Uh, I really only started playing the Hatchet. Um, basically for this speed run. I have like a very small Jaws of the Lion run that I'm kind of playing through really slowly. Uh, and so I have like a level four hatchet on there, but I've barely played with him at all. So I'm not super familiar with his cards, which makes doing this speed run a lot harder because I have to spend a lot of time actively thinking about what cards I have and what cards I can use. But luckily easy is an easy run as the name would imply. And Earth Demon goes down. Plane of Elemental Power is done. Frozen Hollow. Uh, this one's really, really hard on Brutal. It's much, much easier on Easy. Uh, there are there are a lot of enemies in this scenario. Uh, it has wolves. Wolves can be really annoying. Luckily on Easy, they don't retaliate. Um, and the Spellweaver is, is just really, really good in this scenario. Uh, if you've seen my Brutal run, it primarily uses a Mind Thief and the Lightning Bolt class, uh, but on Frozen Hollow I do actually switch in a Spellweaver. So luckily I still have a Spellweaver, so that's the main class I'm using, so she can just stay in. Finally, I am done with some linked scenarios, so I can level up my hatchet, I can spend 
the massive amounts of gold I've gotten on my characters and go into Frozen Hollow. So the hatchet got to level up. The Spellweaver is going to stay at level 1. Uh, her level 2 and 3 cards are not very good. Um, Cold Fire is a very, very good card, but it's not good for the speed run. Dealing 1 damage to 3 targets is uh, not ideal, even if they're stunned. Uh, I definitely mess up here. I should have moved my characters forward so that I didn't have to use my boots to reach the wolves, but I just wasn't paying attention. I thought about restarting round, but I figured it would be faster, or it would be fine to just use my boots uh, and not lose the 30 seconds from reloading the scenario. Three minus ones on these wolves is kind of bad luck, but it's also, it makes sense. Uh, in this scenario, all your characters get extra minus ones added to their deck. And like I said, neither of these characters can ignore negative scenario effects. But luckily the hatchet doesn't pull any minus twos here, and he's able to kill all of the wolves. And Living Spirit's going to move forward. Now I would really like to have my boots here for the Spellweaver to get her further uh, further in this room closer to the door while she sets up her crackling air here. But I made that small mistake and I'll have to live with it. Uh, and then here it's kind of a difficult decision. I don't remember. I haven't taken notes for this run. Um, and so a lot of it I kind of just come up with on the fly. And so I was struggling with what card to pick here on the hatchet, and of course I get my minus two. And so this guy doesn't die, which is very, very annoying. Especially because he's attacking again this turn. He, he has a couple cards that he's like basically useless, like he'll attack both targets for one, or he'll just lay out some curses. Uh, but an attack for four is a pretty big attack. So Spellweaver's gonna go into this next room. I would love to set up the favorite here, but I... I really need to deal with this guy who's being annoying. So I need a zero and I get it. And then I could move forward and open the next door. Oh yeah, I do, I do. And the frost demons are slower than my spell gear, which is very good. So she is able to get in position. I love Ride the Wind. Such a such a useful card when you have everything planned out and rounded out ahead of time. Uh, but if you were just playing a Spellweaver casually and the levels are blind, don't use Ride the Wind. Uh, <laughs> it's the That is the easiest way to... Or, or Crackling Air. Don't use Crackling Air either. That's not a very good card. Uh, those are the easiest ways to exhaust on the Spellweaver is by... By using some of those some of those losses that don't actually really deal damage themselves, but they work out perfectly for the speed run. Frost Demon's hitting really hard here, uh, so I went ahead and went invisible here. I wasn't thinking about the fact that my uh, Spellweaver will be healing uh, since she is getting reviving Ether back. She's going to be using this bottom heal four, and so I could have just healed the Hatchet and he would have been fine. But given that the Frost Demon has Frost here to consume for this ranged attack, he's going to hit pretty hard. Uh, and I could have gone invisible there on the Spellweaver so that she wouldn't eat it, but I, w I want her to be invisible in this final room. But she has one charge of Crackling Air left, which means with the way it is broken, she will be able to hit all four targets with uh, her Impaling Eruption. Luckily, this guy goes down. I do want my Hatchet back because there is an Elite Frost Demon in this final room. Uh, I believe he has 10 health. Yeah, 10 health. So she's able to get into this final room, and even a minus two will still kill that living spirit. Very nice, very nice. And she can go invisible, although I guess I didn't really need to because this frost demon isn't attacking this turn. Not the end of the world. And one enemy left, and that is Frozen Hollow. It's so annoying to slowly move the hatchet forward with his move ones. As soon as extra lift is, is gone, Disorienting Barrage doesn't fly you across the map anymore, which I had uh, kind of forgotten about. Very rarely do I actually really use all of the charges. All right, Temple of the Elements. So this is the first scenario in the run that you do not have to kill all enemies. It is just destroy four altars. So uh, 
these altars only have four health on easy, so it is very easy to explode them with these characters. And it becomes an interesting routing problem of, of trying to optimize how many turns you can do it in. I think I get it in, in five turns here, but four turns are possible if you get a little bit of good RNG. Um, probably I mess up on turn one here a little bit, actually. Uh, like I said, since the, the hatchet does not have very many jump options available to him, he basically has to kill at least one of these cultists in this in this first room because they're blocking the door um and he really needs his extra lift so i do use oh i guess i sped up this scenario i do not mean to speed up this scenario but we can watch it in double speed it it won't hurt anything i don't think you're really missing all too much so I use my power potion on this first turn of the scenario, which means that on my hatchet's final turn, he will need to be getting a, uh, a plus one, uh, cause he doesn't ever get the favorite setup. He just never has a free turn with his top action to set the favorite up. But with extra lift, he's able to get into position here and then power pitch, even a minus two will destroy this altar. Uh, go invisible here just so that uh, when all your characters are invisible, none of the monsters actually act. And so it makes their turns go by very quickly. Now you can see how how far you can fly with Disorienting Barrage. And I need a plus one here, and I don't get it. Just a zero. So that's going to cost me a turn. Uh, and so I guess this is definitely one of the scenarios that has the worst RNG, because this is a very long scenario to uh, to not get a kill on. Plus two is nice, it killed that wind demon. That'll save me uh, two turns of that wind demon acting. <laughs> Need to make sure I pick cards that actually deal damage there, rather than just two, uh, two effects. But with an attack for three, altar had one health, it's going to die no matter what. I can just let my hatchet die here. It, uh, I didn't get the uh, retirement goal of having your allies exhaust or having yourself exhaust. So there is nothing wrong with just letting a character die. I am not sentimental at all. Okay, Tem Temple of Elements is done. And Plane of Night. So this is a scenario that is very, very, very easy in my brutal run. As long as I pick all the right cards, it is 100% guaranteed uh, in three turns. And one of the reasons for that is the Mind Thief. The Mind Thief is very, very good because of his card possession. Now here I definitely mess up. I did not realize that I had such bad reputation that all my items were costing one extra gold. And so I cannot buy the Boots of Striding on my Mind Thief. Uh, I, it is so important that the Hatchet has jumps that I actually sell his Boots of Striding and buy him jump boots. And then I buy the Boots of Striding back on my Mind Thief since you can only have two pairs, so one's on my Spellweaver, one's on my Mind Thief. Uh, but I do not have the gold for it. Luckily, though, it's just one extra gold two times, so I just need to pick up two gold, which is only one gold pile. So I just need to kill one enemy and pick up his gold pile in this scenario, uh, which is not something I normally have to do. It would be better if these night demons had moved forward uh, and then the hatchet's able to just walk through that trap on the left. The traps in this scenario deal two damage and they curse you, so you don't have to worry about immobilize or stun or anything. In a lot of these scenarios, the traps immobilize and stun. Uh, but the mind thief is able to even push this guy onto a trap, which is very nice. Now, 100% right here, I should have my turn be to use scurry top to get onto that coin and uh, possession to throw the hatchet forward. But I was not thinking and the card that I ditched to not take damage was scurry. So now I can't grab that coin, but that is all right. All I have to do is throw my hatchet forward and then kill this night demon right next to me. Which I don't get. But that's okay, I just need to pick up that one gold pile. <laughs> it's just one gold pile. How hard can it be to get, right? 
So I finally get to use stopping power for the bottom, and this right here, you can see why I bought these jump boots. Boots of Striding would have actually worked for me, because I could have just made my stopping power move further, but I do need Boots of Striding on my Mind Thief, so it's very important that I pick up that gold pile that I'm trying to get. Have my invisibility cloak, so the hatchet is guaranteed to win this scenario. The, uh, all I have to do is destroy that column right there, it has 16 health, and my hatchet can attack for 20. So even if he draws a minus two, he will still kill. This is pretty bad RNG to get this uh, strengthen all allies, uh, muddle all enemies from these stupid black imps. Uh, probably loses about 10 seconds or so, but not the end of the world. And right here, my, my thief gets immobilized. I mean, I cannot go and pick up that coin, and my only loot too is scurry which I have burned, so I can't use scary. Now what I should have realized is I could have short rested, got fearsome blade back, I could have used fearsome blade bottom to, uh, I would have needed to get a minus one or better to kill this stupid, and I would have gotten the minus one to kill that stupid night demon, and then I could have used into the night top to loot the gold coin since I was immobilized. Uh, but I didn't think about it at the time. <laughs> I, I thought about it like halfway through the turn, but it was too late to go back at that point. So power potion and hatchet makes or er, and favorite makes the hatchet always kill right here. Unfortunately, even at 60, I was faster than these deep terrors, so they get to take their turns, but it's almost no time at all. Oh, and these black imps haven't gone yet either. So a little bit of bad RNG in this one. Uh, definitely bad RNG with my mind thief getting immobilized. Those uh Deep Terrors only have one card that immobilizes, so that was a 1 in 8 chance. But, Plane of Night is done. Treacherous Divide. Treacherous Di Divide is the easiest scenario in the run. I do believe I leave it speed sped up. I intended to, uh, because I just have to go all the way to the end and destroy a 6 health altar. And so, you can guess very easily which cards I will be using. I try not to take any time at all in picking my battle goals. I try to just grab whichever battle goal I see that I think is doable. So I just need possession to throw my hatchet forward, and then he will extra lift himself and move with fancy hat to get a nice five move. And he is already almost to that door all the way in the back. He can go invisible, so none of these enemies can do anything to him. The only thing that can be really annoying in this scenario is that these cave bears can go at 14, and they can, uh, they can move forward and immobilize you with a melee attack. So that is very, very annoying if it happens. But Disorienting Barrage Bottom does deal damage to this altar, even though it's not an enemy, it's just a, an object, which makes Power Pitch always kill even with a minus two. So very nice to be able to move and deal guaranteed damage with Disorienting Bottom, whatever it's called, Barrage. Nightmare Peak. Nightmare Peak is connected to Treacherous Divine. Uh, so I won't have the opportunity to switch out characters. Uh, I'm not sure if the Spellweaver would be particularly fast here or not. Um, this is another very good example of having possession on the Mind Thief. And this is also uh, the main scenario that I really, really want jump boots on my hatchet for. Uh, this very beginning of this first room has several tiles of difficult terrain for you to get over so if you had boots of striding it would only get you over one pile of this uh difficult terrain whereas jump boots can jump you over two of them so i just have to make sure that my hatchet goes faster than my mind thief so that when i possession here i already have my extra lift activated and then i can use these boots to get over this savas 
and then it doesn't particularly matter what my my thief oh no my mind thief still needs his two gold pile he's still trying to get two gold it's been <laughs> it's been two scenarios and he has been unable to do so i have not done very much practicing on my routing uh in fact i only i only decided to uh use the mind thief for these three scenarios today uh or for this scenario in particular today and so this is actually my first run that has ever used the mind thief in this scenario and he cannot get any pulls that's two pulls on this on this night demon that have both been zero zero damage but he did get his kill and he's right next to that gold pile so he will be able to pick it up no matter what I could go invisible here, uh, but I chose not to since I'm immobilizing these wind demons. They will be pulling me in, uh, but this will save my invisibility cloak for the final room. Which will just make uh, some of the actions go a little bit faster. This bastard wind demon, re they really do not want me to pick up my stupid, <laughs> my stupid one gold pile from my negative reputation. Uh, these wind demons also went invisible on their turn, which just takes so much time for them to consume. Oh, I think that's coming up right here on this next turn. They go at three speed and go invisible, which is just such an awful card for them to draw when you're playing. Oh, they go at nine speed. Is it night demons that go at three speed? Something goes at three speed and is really annoying. So, just have to suffer through this damage, and then suffer through the very long cutscene of them consuming the wind. And I didn't actually know until I, until I started playing Gloomhaven Digital that uh, when you do, when, when the monsters consume an element, all of them will consume it, not just the first. I, I always thought just the first wind demon would go invisible, but I guess they all do. So, just waiting for these monsters to play out their turns. I get to go forward, so I will need a good pull here to kill, since I can just do a little bit of damage with Disorienting Barrage, and then I need a zero or better, and that's what I get. Exactly the zero, can just go invisible, and the scenario is over. Both my characters are invisible, so these Savas will just stay still. Nightmare Peak is done. Drake's Nest. So the Mind Thief is going to go back in the box, and Spellweaver is going to come back in. Uh, she's got really good AoE for this scenario. Drake Nest, all you have to do is kill eight dragons. Uh, so this is the first scenario that I really want Sharpened Blades top for. Sharpened Blades top will give me plus one damage and wound on my next four attacks. I can finally buy my boots on my Mind Thief, and so I made sure I equipped them before I <laughs> put him back in the box and get the spell weaver back out that's a pretty good road event to get here to get to get a bless uh mostly i'm just glad i don't start wounded and i'm glad i'm not having to start with any with uh discarding any cards uh although this scenario this scenario is one of the hardest in the brutal run and it's one of the easiest in the easy it's it's i find it really really intriguing the way the difficulty swap um which scenarios are difficult to swap based off the difficulty you're playing. Uh, but no matter what, this scenario is always very difficult for my computer. So, and also it, it slows my computer down for the rest of the run after this, uh, just because of all of the flames and everything from these flame demons. So I, probably that's one of the easiest ways to beat my run is if your computer can load faster than mine. Uh, you can probably save at least two minutes throughout the run just in loading time. I'm not exactly sure. Unfortunately, this uh, this flame demon is wounding both my guys on turn one, so that's probably the worst card that he could draw. Um, but it's it's not the end of the world. This is a very fast scenario. So time to get crackling air back up. We haven't had the spell weaver for a few scenarios, and uh, we haven't had to kill all enemies for a while, so she hasn't needed that crackling air. But it's just so so strong on easy. This flame demon is being so annoying. And I really don't want to take a lot of damage, just since I'm wounded and I'm going to be facing a few enemies, I might be hit a couple times. Easiest to just ditch a card there and not take damage. 
so disorienting barrage bottom and so now i have not activated my favorite top but since i do have sharpened blades i will be wounding with my next four attacks which means that even if i had gotten minus one on those guys they would have died to the wound and if i had gotten a minus two then they would have died on the following turn which would not be bad at all so that is two dragons down six to go put your guess down in the comments for how many more turns it's going to take <laughs> It would be very nice if uh, I had a little bit more gold on the Spellweaver. I think she's four gold short of being able to buy an Eagle Eye Goggles, uh, which would make me probably not use my Power Potion right here. If I had advantage, I just need zeros to kill. Uh, but she still has one charge of Crackling, crackling Air left, so Mana Bolt with Fire Orbs is most likely going to be able to f finish everything out. Just need to pick cards. It just yeah. Power pitch is fine. I should just go. <laughs> I don't know why I was going so slow. And my computer is really struggling. This is such a difficult scenario to watch. I need the zero at disadvantage, and I get it. Get the plus one. So that made me very happy. This is this is a very good gold on this level, just because of uh, ending on... Is that turn three? I think that's a turn three victory. Very nice for killing eight eight enemies doom trench ironically this is maybe the hardest the hardest scenario in the run i i don't know why i've <laughs> i've i've messed with the testing with my characters on this scenario so many times over and over again and originally i was doing hatchet and mind thief and then i was doing hatchet and spell weaver and then it was just today that i was just doing a little little tiny bit of testing in the afternoon and uh I, I thought, well, maybe Mind Thief and Spellweaver. And that seems to work out for me. Uh, I do rely on a short rest. I have three cards, and I need the short rest to pull one of those three. Otherwise, I lose a turn. Um, but this is, I, I believe I finish... Uh, if I do get that good RNG, then I finish one turn faster with these two characters. If I don't get that RNG, then I finish one... Or I finish at the same speed but also the hatchet can just have a bunch of things go wrong. This scenario can be very difficult because uh, Deep Terrors have a 1 in 8 chance that the card they pull can immobilize you. Uh, Harrower Infestors have a 1 in 8 chance that they will draw a 16 speed card where they do a melee attack that will immobilize you. And Lurkers have the potential to actually deal a lot of damage. Both my characters only have 6 health here, and that guy just hit for 4. They can also uh, hit you multiple times at the same turn, so they can be really annoying. I really want this Deep Terror to die, uh, just so that my Mind Thief can walk straight through him. Otherwise, he would have to walk around, and that would take extra movement tiles. So that was a very lucky plus one there. Uh, I did get a minus on my Mind Thief, so it kind of balances out. Uh, so Scurry is really the thing that makes the Mind Thief good here, and that's why I had to get a Stamina Potion on him. Uh, because I need to be able to scurry two times in a row, but I don't want to lose one of my move fours to a short rest. So, Mind Thief is able to get behind these traps. These traps right here immobilize as well, so you have to jump over these traps. But since uh, the Hatchet and the Spellweaver are both so slow, it's very possible that all these Lurkers and this Harrower move up and they block your path if you're playing the hatchet and then you just do not have the jump cards or the jump boots that you need available to jump over everything so it's needing big jumps makes makes this scenario very difficult for the hatchet luckily mind thief is able to get a move for jump uh and then add plus two with boots of striding now this is the turn where i really wanted to lose gnawing horde so that I could scurry top forward and then feedback loop uh, to jump over in this next room because there are, you need to be able to jump over these deep terrors. Unfortunately, I didn't get it and so I am just going to have to fight my way through like a man. And the Spellweaver is just getting ganged up on. You can see how this scenario, it just, it has a lot of stuff that can go wrong. You're constantly having to 
to ditch cards to not take damage and spellweaver is she's falling way behind she's almost dead luckily we're reviving ethering this turn and so she's going to get all of her cards back and it very 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 considerate of that inf harrower to walk forward there But I don't have an invisibility cloak available or the uh, gold to buy it on the Mind Thief. It would be very nice if he did have an invis cloak here. I don't know why I'm going invisible on the Spellweaver. That was just a waste of time. But she is able to reach the end from where she is. Uh, but since I don't have Scurry anymore, my Mind Thief cannot. So once I commit to that short rest, there's nothing I can really do. I could restart round and then go for a long rest, but the 30 seconds that I lose from, from restarting the scenario, it's I might as well just take the extra turn. So, uh, just, a, just a pair of boots away from being able to reach the end, but just not quite there. So it's going to be an extra turn. But that is Doom Trench. That is basically the hardest scenario in the run, which is very funny because you don't have to kill anything. Literally, all you have to do is get to the end. Next scenario is uh, kind of a little bit of a joke. It's a boss fight, and I, I'm pretty sure when it was designed, they just forgot to put a couple rooms in it. Uh, you will see it is, it's a very fast scenario. It might be the fastest in the run. I'm not sure uh, which one wins out between that and Treacherous Divide and Barrel Lair. Many very, very fast levels on easy. Oh my gosh, these monsters are taking forever on their turns. I wish I had sped this up. And finally, we are done. When I when I do that scenario with the hatchet and the spellweaver, they end up using their AoE attacks a lot and I do I do use crackling air in that scenario just because they have a much easier time beating that by fighting their way through. But once again, the speeds of the characters just do not line up well. Uh, it would be really nice in that second room if the Spellweaver could run in and kill everything with fire orbs before the hatchet can go, but he just cannot go slower than her. So it makes those two, it, they just do not have good synergy on that level. And then this is a boss fight, so you would kind of think that the hatchet would be best here because uh, the hatchet is very good for destroying bosses but it's a linked scenario it's linked to that previous one so uh, i would have to do i would have to spend time walking back to gloomhaven and then i would have to do a road event on the way if i went back but luckily this boss only has 14 health and so these two are able to tackle it even though it's not exactly their forte And this is another scenario that can be faster on the Brutal Run, if you get good RNG. But overall, we're going to come in about 40 minutes faster. So I would really... This is this is a little bit tense here uh, because my mind thief cannot do anything better than a move four and has no ranged attacks left. So I need this attack to kill either the boss or that deep terror right in front of it, so the mind thief can hit that square. Uh, but luckily, I killed the boss and I didn't have to worry about it. I should not be taking the time to kill this guy. It would be faster to just let him take a turn. And Lair of the Unseeing Eye is done. So, time for Slave Pens. Uh, if you have played this scenario before, you know that it is very difficult. 
and for a while i actually thought that this was harder on easy than it is on brutal uh i went ahead and deleted my mind thief there i had extra gold uh and so i went ahead and rebought boots of striding on my hatchet uh, this is a very long scenario this scenario has five rooms really lucky that I have a spell weaver in my party too because uh if you do not have a spell weaver or a crag heart I believe uh then you and maybe the well I'm not going to say a, a locked classes name but uh both of those options on that road event are very bad unless you have a spell weaver in the party and then you can pick the bottom one and you don't have to discard any cards uh so in this scenario I have to escort this orchid I never remember his name, Redthorn. I have to escort Redthorn all the way to the end. And he likes to just move three at the end of every turn and just walk right into danger and die. He has six health. If he dies, you lose. So you have to abuse the fact that if he does not see a way forward, he will not move. That's why I moved my hatchet up so that these two, uh, so that these two Enoch's guards would stay still. And so they are blocking the way and Redthorn will not move. So basically on easy, my plan is just to keep keep the first two doorways plugged up for a little bit and I will move my characters super far ahead and and basically try to clear out the first three rooms and then hope that I can finish everything before Redthorn catches up. I actually use the bottom of the hatchet here uh, to wound an enemy. None of the enemies in this scenario can... Uh, can heal wounds except for the shamans but i kill the shamans very quickly and there aren't any shamans in these rooms so all of these enemies who are wounded <laughs> hatchet was able to dish out four wounds this this turn all of them will die to these wounds eventually it's just going to take several turns for some of them so hopefully my summon back here is going to be able to 1v1 both of these enox guards back here in the in the first room and that guy stepped up forward so he is now blocking that door and redthorn will no longer move forward and so spell weaver gets a turn she's going to go to room three she's got her crackling air up which means all of these enemies go bye bye i don't know if i needed my power potion there or not but well i did not need my power potion but that is hindsight also i uh I should have swapped out uh, my Frost Nova card for, I believe it's called Flame Strike. Uh, it gives you a bottom attack option, which is very nice, and then the top can wound if you have fire. So if I had Flame Strike here, I would be using it uh, on that ancient stone golem that is in the Spellweaver's room. But I get to do a nice uh, go slow, go fast here on my Spellweaver, so last the my summon gets to take two turns in a row and finish off both of those uh, Enox guards in the first room. And then I get nice big damage with that plus one. Uh, Spellweaver is low and I don't want her to have to dish cards. Even on easy, these, uh, these stone golems can hit pretty hard. And then that guy has three health, but he will die to his wounds eventually. Uh, and this guy can't get in range. And that guy can't get in range either. Very nice benefit of easy. And now Redthorn is on the loose. So he's basically just going to be walking forward now for the rest of the scenario. Um, so it seems like I'm probably in a good position. But my hatchet has used a lot of loss cards. Uh, I almost always play a ton of losses on him. I haven't activated the favor yet either. Uh, and then it's I'm kind of in an awkward situation on, on killing this stone golem. Because... Uh, if I use anything other than Power Pitch, it's not a guaranteed kill. Oh, and I get that minus two. Oh, but I still have my wounds available, so it's not that bad. Because he will die, and uh, I don't think it would be possible for him to kill Redthorn before he dies, because he's only going to get one more turn. These guys didn't move. Uh, this archer has to stay still with that, with that speed card, so uh, Redthorn is not going to move again. He's just going to stay still. So I don't need my summon anymore. Do I figure that out and unsummon him? Probably not. Waste a little bit of time by the summon getting a turn, but... Oh, painful. Time loss. There we go. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, so I really want my Spellweaver to get into that final room. Oh, and I had to make sure that I set Wind on the previous turn. That is always something to keep in mind. It's kind of... I don't know. I don't, I don't see like a super efficient method for killing these guys all the time. It would be best if my hatchet still had one charge of his uh, sharpened blades and he could uh, he could hit both of them with something like double throw or disorienting barrage and then it has the same effect as the crackling air card where even though there's only one charge left it get, he gets to use it on both but I had to use it to kill that elite stone golem since I didn't bring flame strike um, and then I'm counting the squares here but I think since I don't have boots I won't reach Oh, yeah, yeah, I won't reach into the final room, and so I just decide to uh, kill the enemies in this room. And this this scenario probably could have gone faster. I probably could have saved about a minute. Especially because I believe this guard does not die. Ugh, needed the plus one. Not the end of the world, and my hatchet has his boots. He has a ton of stamina left, too. I, don't, I have way more cards than I need. There goes the favorite. The hardest scenario in the run, and I don't even use the favorite top. That will upset some hatchet players. So, Spellweaver only has three cards left, so she's only going to get one more turn. Uh, so I need to long rest so that I can get my boots back, so that I can do something in the final room. And then, I don't know, I used Fancy Hat to get the guaranteed kill, even with a minus two. I felt like I was due for a minus two. So Impaling Eruption will be able to hit three, and I still have my Crackling Air Charges. So this should be an easy win from here. Uh, I don't have any uh, extra Lift Charges left, so my... No, I should Disorienting Barrage for sure. Okay, I figured it out. You have to make sure you use your boots before you hit that door, otherwise the turn will just end, and it won't give you the option to or the movement will end and it won't give you the option to move anymore. If I had gotten just a zero instead of minus two, I would have killed that guy, but definitely not too bad because I have just enough movement with my boots that I will be able to reach. I could have reached for that previous square. Most hatchets attacks are three range and this one's four. Slave pins is done. That is one of the harder scenarios in the run. It's once you have a plan for it and you have everything kind of mapped out at least a little bit, it's not that hard. Uh, I do think that Doom Trench is harder, which is hilarious for me to say because Doom Trench is completely free on Brutal and Slave Pens is absolutely the hardest level in the run. So, unfortunately, that scenario links to another scenario, but it is not one that we need to complete for the run. So we have to walk back to Gloomhaven for a little bit. Uh, and Shadow Wield. I love this boss fight. It's a really cool fight. If the boss ever hits you with a melee attack, he basically goes inv invisible, so you cannot let the boss melee you. Fortunately though, both my characters have invisibility cloaks, and so they can't be meleeed while they're invisible. And so that is all I have to do. Uh, he can go at 11, which is faster than the hatchet, uh, but if he goes at 11, he only gets a movement of 2, so as long as my hatchet is not uh, not all the way forward, he can't be hit anyway. And then the boss can't outspeed this spell over 7. Uh, the, the last time I was here, I did not have invisibility cloaks on both my characters because I had had less gold. Uh, and so I thought that killing those forest imps was faster, but now I think it would be faster to just go invisible. Um, on both my characters and have the forest imps basically skip their turn. It's probably a very similar speed to killing them though. Boss comes in and he's just not going to be able to do anything. My characters are pretty good at going slow. Hatchet, Hatchet definitely needs like one one card with like 89 speed or something like that. It would make this run much smoother. It would make multiple scenarios actually a lot easier. <laughs> but luckily the Earth Demons went faster than 64. Normally they're very slow. Double throw lets me double the damage of my attack and power potion plus hatchet plus power pitch, guaranteed kill. And can just skip my spell weaver actions. 
And just like that, all of the mini boss fights are done. There is just one final remaining boss. Um, I probably should not delete my Mind Thief because the Mind Thief is definitely better than the Spell Weaver for this final boss fight. So I don't know if that is an optimization that I will ever try to apply. Um, I'm pretty happy with this run overall. Uh, this final boss fight though, it can be pretty rough. I, I think I got really bad RNG on it. Um, he has, his, his very fast effect has him teleport away from you and then stun one of your characters. Uh, and I definitely could have, I realized during this that I could have played it better. Uh, I should have used my boots of striding here and gone closer to that, uh, to the top portal. The first time he teleports, he's going to go to that top portal and I should have just gone invisible. Uh, and that way I would have been able to go ahead and hit him with a double throw power pitch. Uh, but since I did not do that. I have to, I, I would very much like for him to not draw his teleport and stun card on this next turn. And then Spellweaver just gets a crackling air in here. Uh, and once again, I forgot that I didn't have Flame Strike. Having Flame Strike bottom would let me do a double hit uh, and I could go at like mana bolt speed and double hit for like 10 damage. Um, that would be the main benefit of a Spellweaver over a Mind Thief. But this stupid boss draws his teleport and stun card, and so the spell weaver is basically dead. She's stunned for this turn, there's nothing she can do, she can't even go invisible. And so, this boss fight is going to be entirely on the hatchet. So he gets in position here, very important to not use my buffs, because I want to use them when, I, they, when their effect will be doubled. And I go invisible here, that way if he draws his move and teleport card, it won't hurt me. So Spellweaver is going to have to ditch cards to not die, so she's only going to get one attack in. It's not even worth using that heal. I should just use the attack and not waste the time. One attack for six, and she gets a plus one. So not bad damage, but she she's dead. I should have just let her die, not taken the time to waste cards. But at this point, I knew that I had a very good run, and I get my 20 damage in. Almost have the boss dead. Yeah, because of that obstacle, he was he wasn't he would have had to take two steps to hit the spell weaver. So, even though she was faster, she was not his focus. She is dead. Now I just need a nice big turn from my hatchet. Eight damage, but I've got multiple tools that let me attack on the bottom. So an attack for five at disadvantage gets a plus two, and that means this will kill even with a minus two. I do get the minus two, but that is it. Gloomhaven easy in less than 80 minutes. It's, it's a pretty fun run. Um, the, the really interesting thing about this one is that all characters can do it. There is there like there's very little requirement. Um, I don't even know that these are the fastest two characters to do. I do think that Spellweaver is fastest and you really want something that can set wind. So I was very excited when the hatchet came out and I was able to add him on. Um, because he, he kind of smoothed out the run a little bit. Uh, but I could definitely see the Brute being fast. Uh, I also really, really like the Brute. The Brute is one of my favorite characters. But that is all for this uh, Gloomhaven easy run. Um, stay tuned because I, th I have I th what I think is a really fun idea for a series that I want to start next, and that is going to be uh, playing through the game on Solo Deadly. Uh, so the next video I upload is going to be a level 8 Spellweaver soloing uh, the very first scenario of the game, Black Barrow. Uh, hopefully. We'll see if I'm able to do it or not. <laughs> but I think that's going to be a really fun challenge, and that's what I have coming next. So uh, that is all I have for you. Have a good one, guys. Thank you.